What's up guys, now that iOS 11 is finally here, I wanted to make a final summary video. Should you update or should you stay where you're at? What are the features that actually matter? Because yes, I could sit here and list off the hundreds of things that have changed between iOS 10 and iOS 11, but I wanted to talk about the stuff that actually matters that will impact your day-to-day -day life. So should you update to Apple's flashy new firmware Let's get right into it. The first thing you'll notice is Apple's new cover sheet. The lock screen and notification center have joined forces and they are now one. So slide down and you go back to the lock screen where all of your notifications will be present. It even has a new landscape mode, kind of cool. And be warned, honestly, it took me a little while to get the whole concept of the new notification center plus lock screen combination, but there are some cool benefits. The new music player actually allows you to see notifications while music is playing, one of the biggest flaws with the old lock screen. And you'll notice the new splash screen on the lock screen, the passcode entering screen, things have been adjusted. Now, actually getting into the phone, you'll notice the animation is different too. Varying animations throughout the iOS experience have changed. You'll notice apps feel a little different entering them, exiting them, and even waking your phone from a black screen has a nice new fade animation. So actually getting into the home screen, you'll notice a lot of the app icons look different, but mostly the same. Apple has tweaked a lot of the icons, replacing some entirely, while others just tweaking slightly. The dock gets a cleaner look as Apple has removed the app icon labels from down below. And with these new icons, there's a new animation as well. It's a little bit stickier, it feels a little different, and you can move multiple icons at once, which is a neat little touch. So if that bothered you before, now it's fixed. Now the control center receives a huge overhaul in iOS 11. Everything is on one single page now, and there are a ton of new controls, like low power mode from the control center, super convenient. You can actually start recording your screen from directly in here, very, very convenient tool. There's an Apple TV remote, everything you need is pretty much here. Not only that, there is support for third-party ones as well, so you can actually customize what you want in here in the order that it shows up in. Very convenient. And the cool thing is there are now new platters, so you 3D touch on one of these and they come up in a platter for more accurate controls or more information on what you're doing here. And the cool thing is that works on non-3D touch devices as well. Just hold on those platters and they will pop up. Same thing with iPads. Now, unfortunately, if you were a fan of using the App Switcher 3D touch method from the side of your screen, it no longer works in iOS 11. Apple has removed that. And that's one of the biggest things that's deterred me from updating iOS 11 at first. And you'll notice that a lot of the apps, the theme inside of the app has changed. You have a very bold title up top and it's very clean and white and you're gonna see that everywhere in settings basically they took the Apple music theme and adjusted it to everywhere I mean in the iOS for many of the apps it's all right I guess I'm not a big fan of the empty white spaces but that's the new theme for apps and drag-and-drop exists in many forms in iOS 11 so for example in some apps you can drop a picture just like that in others you can 3d touch on a word and move it around in the text field drop it wherever you like one that many people will appreciate with larger screen sizes is the fact that there is a new one-handed keyboard. Just hold on the symbol key here and uh, you can activate a one-handed keyboard for either the right or left orientation. And it sticks so you can continue to use it like that. If you're transferring between devices or you just bought a new iPad and you want to share the setup with that device, you can actually do that and it's super convenient. You basically type in your passcode, authorize it, and there's this really cool menu where you can basically like setting an Apple Watch up. And that very same feature works for sharing personal hotspots and Wi-Fi, as you can do it easily through a prompt, not just for the setup menu. And there are a number of new wallpapers, very nice ones actually, throwbacks to the original iPhone and the original days of Apple with these retro wallpapers, a lot of color ones with gradients, super nice. I really like these and then the Earth one for the throwback to the original iPhone. Maps receives some upgrades, some interface changes, and lane guidance now, something that it's been missing for quite some time. You can also get indoor maps for certain malls and airports where it'll show you the floor plans, show you how to get from one area to another, the nearest exits. There's a new do not disturb while driving mode, which filters your notifications from coming through when you're using navigation and you can actually whitelist people to break through that barrier, but it's another safety technique in iOS. Siri, how do you say, hi, my name is Philip in French? Salut, je m'appelle Philippe. Salut, je m'appelle Philippe. Siri can now do translations. She sounds a lot more natural in any of her voices. And in general, she is much more aware contextually of what you're doing. She remembers certain search results. She remembers certain things you do, where you go. And she takes all of those things into consideration when actually providing you with results. And not only here, but you'll see Siri results contextually for the keyboard in many different areas. Siri has become much smarter in iOS 11. And Messages has been updated as well. So you get a slightly tweaked app store bar here on the bottom. 
where you can access all of those apps, a new icon here. There are also new effects for iMessage here for the screen. You can get a nice echo effect or a spotlight couple changes there. Now under the hood changes that Apple hasn't actually included yet, iMessage Pay or Apple Pay over iMessage where you can send each other money through this application as well as iCloud syncing for messages. So you'll be able to sync all of your stuff across all devices and uh, keep all that in the cloud so you don't have to locally store it, take up extra storage. The quick reply interface has got a nice new dark mode everywhere with a dark keyboard there, it looks really cool. Safari has received some upgrades as well. So the loading bar itself is a little bit cleaner, different looking, and the scrolling behavior now matches the rest of the system. In iOS 10 and below, notice how sticky it is. Now it's a free scrolling behavior everywhere in Safari. There's a cool new secret, double tap a link to open it in a new tab, which is very convenient. And you can actually zoom inside of videos that you play on YouTube or really anywhere inside of the Safari browser. And the new video player in general looks really neat. It looks a lot more modern. You got your scrubber down here so you don't have to reach all the way up to the top just to move in the video. And uh, you got your buttons to control the volume here. And Safari now has a built-in QR code detector. So directly from within Safari, you can actually do multiple things. As you can see, I just joined a network via that. You can actually load a contact or go to a certain web page too. The camera app has a number of updates. So for one, you can actually slide up and enter the filter mode, which is a lot more convenient. You don't have to go all the way to the top to click the button. There's a number of new filters here, a lot of renamed older ones, and you have QR supports directly within the app, as you can see. There you go. Now photos have gotten a lot smarter. So memories can now be played in portrait mode. They recognize a lot more things like pets or even certain weather conditions. So that's a lot smarter. In the actual photos, if you take a live photo, you can edit the effects after you take them to a number of new uh, cool effects. You can also change the actual cover image of that photo. So get the perfect one if the original was a little blurry. And if you have portrait mode, iPhone 7 plus, you can actually disable portrait after taking that picture or re-enable it. And there is native GIF support now within the photos application. Thank goodness this has finally been added. And in general, there is a new HEVC photo and video codec standard. That means taking 4K images or images and video in general will take up half the space now on iOS 11. Not only will you get more storage back after updating, your new photos will take up less storage. The Files app is new. Inside of here, you'll find a lot of your local files from iCloud Drive. It's basically a glorified iCloud Drive, but the cool thing is it will work with new locations. So such as third-party applications, you can actually sync them all in here. I've got Dropbox, Google Drive would work. Really nice integration with all of those third-party apps. Inside of the App Store, you will find an entirely new interface less focused on charts and bringing you more images, kind of more bubbly little app store here. Also, you can make in-app purchases directly from within the app store. It doesn't have to be from the app. And a small update Apple did to the rating system. You don't have to go into the app store anymore just to rate to the apps. You can do that within the applications now. The music application has been updated to be more of a social thing where you can share your current playlists with friends, see what they've liked and shared all in one area. And HomeKit has been updated as well. Now you have multi-speaker support in different rooms, play different things in different rooms, very neat. And this all works together with AirPlay 2, which makes that multi-speaker speaker supports possible. Inside of accessibility, you'll find a hidden dark mode called Smart Invert, where it'll basically reverse all of the colors on your device, giving that white look in iOS a dark makeover, but saving the content of certain areas. So as you can see, album art is preserved in its original form, but you still get that dark interface. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for third-party apps, but in many areas, you will notice that not everything is reversed, and it's almost usable as a dark mode replacement. AirPods have been improved in iOS 11, and this is like 90% of the reason why I'm personally updating because the gestures have been updated. And look at that, jet black AirPods, pretty cool, pretty cool, huh? So you can actually set different gestures for the AirPods in your ear, and depending on which one you're at, double tapping will do different things. It's very neat that Apple finally updated that, and you get a really cool animation when connecting AirPods as well now. And the iPad, where to begin on this one? The iPad has been turned from a larger iPhone into its very own independent machine, something you can actually multitask on, something that is incredibly more useful now. iOS 11 is a no-brainer to update on the iPad, and I'm gonna do a full review 
review on it in just a bit, but essentially you get a dock, an improved multitasking experience, a new control center experience. Everything has been changed to make this feel like a personal computer now. It is so awesome. There's a huge new focus on dragging and dropping between app panes, allowing you to multitask easier. The control center experience is pretty cool. You get the new platters, it's all accessible, and using it without a home button now has become so much easier, removing that reliance on it. I wouldn't be surprised if future iPads didn't even come with a home button because of it. And one of my favorite things about the iPad is the new quick type keyboard where you can swipe down on the keys and get to the symbol behind that key very simply and easily. So there it is guys, iOS 11, should you update? Honestly, there are so many compelling reasons to update and not very many not to. I haven't noticed a slowdown. As far as performance goes, on the iPhone 5S, that's the only device I can notice a difference on. Things hang just a little bit longer than they used to on iOS 10. On all other devices, I haven't noticed a difference. Aside from the slight bugginess, it's gonna be a little buggy for a while, so I wouldn't even blame you if you waited until iOS 11.1 to update till everything has been ironed out. In fact, I would even recommend that, but it is a worthy upgrade for sure in every way over iOS 10. It's a nice little surprise from Apple today. Definitely makes your older device feel brand new. A little breath of fresh air for all older devices. And my verdict is yes, absolutely update, guys. You will love the experience. It will change your phone in the best way, especially with AirPods. On iPad, absolutely. There is no reason not to. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this little review. Hopefully updating to iOS 11 will bring you no surprises. It'll be a very smooth experience. You'll love it. All right, guys, enjoy iOS 11 when you do decide to update. Peace.